Hey, HTDA, and welcome back to Patreon. Today, we are going to expand our little town, New Amsterdam, a little further. It's a nice and shiny, bright new day, so that's a pretty good day for some building, I would say. And specifically, what I want to do is I kind of want to turn this whole fertile area over here into a massive farm, if that makes any sense. Why do I want to do that? Well, uh, we have a couple of interesting new technologies coming up. So we have the orchid that we researched last time. That allows us to make pear and plum trees. And it also allows us to make brandy, which is quite interesting in the distillery because it's one of the few items that's, I think, actually more expensive than anything else. So let me double check that. Um, let me sort this by price. So you can see cookies. Cookies are awesome. But brandy is one of the few items that actually sells for four silver or gold. What is it? Gold, I guess. Per item. Um, now, to be honest, gold is not really an issue, but if we're going to make something, we might as well make something that we, in theory, could profit off. By the way, I also found decorations now in the list. Not entirely sure why I couldn't find the last time, but anyway, it's there, and we now have a trade deal set up to sell some of that because we don't need as much as we're producing. So, what we're going to do is we are going to research a couple of these things. Um, so we have the plums and pears. We will also be able to make apples and then make cider out of that. And then we can also make cherry and peach trees um, and grapevines for some reason. And it will allow us to make all kinds of nice little boost items. Um, put down a lot of orchids in the result. Uh, in addition to that, I should say. And while we're at it, we might as well get the field crop research as well. Because that will allow us to make all kinds of interesting things like cotton, pumpkins, beans, potatoes, etc. One way or another, we're going to probably need a couple of those forms anyway to um, supplement our late game production. There is bound to be something in here I actually haven't checked that is going to require uh, to, for us to make some farms for whatever. So, but until then, we might as well make use of those things like, uh, I don't know, pumpkins and beans to feed our people and... We have a pretty fertile area over there anyway so let's just go and do that by the way the reason i also want to do that is because i have this huge little housing facility set up here and by doing so we can make full use of the fact that we have a lot of people here that want to work or at least we will have and once all those young ones grow up but as you can see we have 105 people almost exactly the same as we have in terms of adults about to grow up well not about to grow up but they will grow up pretty quickly over the next few years so we need something to do for all those people. And boy, do we have something to do with for all those people. As you can see, I built a quite a few fields and a huge amount of orchids as well. Now, it will take a while for these things to actually grow. And uh, you might have also noticed these buildings in between and this gap in the middle. So I actually put some thought into this and also checked out some of the technologies that were coming up. So... First thing I've done is I actually made a field for every single type of crop that we currently have. So we have potatoes, we have cabbage, we have carrots, we have wheat. Uh, what else do we have? We have cotton, we have beans, we have pumpkins and we have oats and we have some flowers and more oats and more and tobacco. Um, so the oats are going straight into the ranches. Um, as you can see, they actually require oats in order to produce wool mutton etc we have some um, pigs and sheep over here that we already had the flowers are actually um, luxury resources for peasants currently we have none but as you can see they, they are slowly growing these um, flowers in between the snowmen um, so apparently these farmers even had time to build snowmen in their fields hmm, interesting uh, but they're harder work as you can see now the other thing that we're doing is we are planting trees basically so we have a huge apple orchid here over here it is going to produce 900 apples per year so that's really nice and efficient i actually have the feeling this efficiency is slowly going up i'm not entirely sure why that is although no actually i do know why that is that's because we have an apiary here in the middle so as you can see this apiary is actually going to benefit from the trees around it um similar to like the herbalist and things like that you actually want to have trees around your apiary. Uh, we don't really have normal trees, but we are growing trees over here. So we should see this efficiency sl slowing, slowly going up. And apparently now we have a plague. Uh, what should we do? We should ensure containment. Let's go in lockdown. We cannot allow the plague to spread into the wider population, whatever the cost. That will kill 20 people. Okay. 
close off the wider area and send all the medicine we can. So that's going to cost us some herbs. But that's not going to take a huge hit to our health. And we're only going to lose four people. Well, it sounds like the obvious choice right there. Uh, my citizens are dying. Um, yeah, we know. It has nothing to do with something I did. Something I did do is that I actually raised the taxes. And as you can see, people are not too happy about that. So I'm actually going to quickly go back and uh yeah remove that decree we can put something else in place there but let's uh give our people a tax break for a moment now why is this not actually doing anything uh because it doesn't actually have a farmer there we go okay so back to the trees we have apples we have pears we have peaches we have grapevines and we have cherries and the reason there's an apiary in the middle is there there is a thing over here that we already reached, which is pollination. And apparently the bees are actually helping pollinate the trees. Makes sense. That's actually a very nice touch, I would say. And I also built a candle maker right in the middle of that because of something that we won't have for quite a while. Um, well, actually, it's not that far off. And that's the optimized route and that increases the candle shop production if it's near an apiary, which it now is. It's an 80% boost, free stuff basically, so we might as well build those two together. Similarly, what I also did is um, I'm, I've built the distilleries adjacent to Orchid now. So I remove the candle shop, remove the apiary, remove the distillery that we already had and replace them with these three distilleries which are now going to make beer this one is going to make cider and this one is going to make brandy and those are things that our laborers want as you can see beer and brandy over here cider for the merchants and wine in the end will be something for the gentry but that's one thing we cannot make but we should have plenty of room to maybe add in a last distillery somewhere over here at some point. Hopefully we won't forget, but anyway, that should be fine. Now, in the meanwhile, I do have some other problems. So we fixed the taxes, but safety is actually a problem for our merchants. Or maybe I should say, oh, well, we actually had a merchant leaving while I was building that uh, because he didn't feel safe. But as you can see, the other merchants still do not feel safe either. So we probably need to look into that as well. Um, however, first things first, you notice this gap in the middle. What is that for? Well, um, there is actually a thing that we can soon research. Uh, as soon as I remember it is. Oh, we actually did already research it. And that's the farm center. Now, this allows the construction of the farm center, which by itself doesn't really tell you anything. Um, but that's this building over here. And it will actually increase the field, ranch, and orchid production within this radius. And to be honest, it has a pretty huge radius, as you can see. So we're going to want to plop that in the middle. I made sure I measured that off. And that will boost everything that we build around it. So yeah, can't really go better than this, I would say. Now, oh, whoops. Um, yeah, so that is something we will need to do. Uh, one problem, we need bricks in order to do that. So in order to get bricks going, we'll have to dive into a different side of the technology tree for a moment. And we will are going to research brickworks now that's actually going to allow us to make some bricks um, straight after that i'm actually also going to invest something in quartz mining as well as glass works um, because those things will actually allow allow us to make glass <laughs> makes sense right glass works make glass uh, and that's going to allow us to do a couple of things so first of all we're going to need the bricks for the farm center and we are going to need the glass and the bricks to upgrade our houses so we can actually upgrade the houses with just glass into from stone houses or from normal houses to stone houses which requires less firewood or coal for heating and then um it will actually also upgrade the size of our house so right now it fits six people in a house that will then become eight so that's huge um and then we're also going to be able to upgrade our house once again to a two-story house which houses two more people but we'll need glass on top of that um then actually we <laughs> able to go straight into brick mansions if we would want to do so um, because that basically allows us to ha house 12 people and that will even satisfy the most demanding of our citizens so that is something we will need to do um, we're also going to need to fix the safety 
And um, yeah, one thing at a time though, we just researched the brickworks. Let's also research the quartz mining. That will mean we're actually going to need an additional quarry because we want to mine quartz. And after that, we're going to research the glass work. Okay, so I fixed a few problems. Um, specifically, I placed a couple of watchtowers in our neighborhoods. And there's one over here. We already had one over here covering most of this neighborhood, but that wasn't really sufficient. So now there's here one as well. And technically, two kills, that's still not sufficient because these houses are out of range. Uh, and they're not too happy about that. So what we could probably do is build another watchtower. Does that fit in over here? Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, well, just build one more watchtower over here then, I suppose. Uh, we are actually getting sort of a low on pull um, in terms of workers available. Sounds a little bit more dramatic than it actually is. I mean, we have 14 people assigned to carrying and we have 25 workers not really doing anything else. So it's not the end of the world, but it is something we need to be a little careful about. Now, let's make sure we actually assign someone here and let's insulate the house so we need a little less firewood. Although firewood is not really a problem at the moment. We have 14,000 in store. We're also doing pretty good on food, as you can see. So all in all, we are in a pretty good position. Now, what we're go going to do is the following. We have this area around here, which is going to be our main residential zone that we have the market in the middle of. And I also actually left some room for things like a tailoring shop that can boost um, happiness. Um, we have things like a watchtower. We probably are going to need to work on our religion at some point as well. As you can see, we are still on the good side of the scale. But religion is slowly starting to drop because people apparently want to pray to their gods. So we can make that happen, um, just not for the moment. And once again, this road is kind of, be, kind of intended to be the difference between the new industrial zone that we're going to set up over here. And why are we going to set it over here? Well, we also have some ore over here. So what we're going to do is the following. We are going to find our production buildings and then we're going to have to find the brick maker. The brick works, I should say. Now this is going to need clay, coal and coins. So what we're going to do is we are going to place that over here at the edge of our um, residential zone. We could actually place it on the other side of the road just to be safe. And then what we could actually also do is place down a warehouse because we are going to need some stuff over here. And the warehouse can probably be something like over here, maybe. Okay. There we go. So that's going to take care of the brickworks as well as the warehouse. Now, in order to do that, I actually like to kind of set up all we need for the brickwork. So if we look at that, we're going to need clay and we're going to need coal. And in order to make glass, we're going to need that quartz. So um, we are going to need to find our mining. Now, I actually completely forgot where our mines are at. Where's the clay pit? So let's start with that one. We can probably... Well, that doesn't actually need to be in a zone. Uh, it's not affected by the um, force. So we can pretty much place it wherever we want. And in that case, we might as well just put it next to the brick maker. Let's keep things efficient, so shall we? Um, and then what else? We are going to need um, a mine. Uh, specifically a coal mine. And this is actually really neat. We can put those here in the back. Should be able to fit. 97% is fine, I think. I mean, this is going to be kind of outside of the residential zone anyway. It's kind of hard to tell where I'm placing it exactly, but I think this is okay. There we go. Uh, this is a coal mine, yes. And then we're going to put a quarry next to that because those two things buff each other. Now, if I can only remember where the, actual, the quarry actually is. Coal mine. Yes, iron mine. Yes. Really? Come on, guys. Tell me. I know you're shouting at the screen. Quarry. There we go. Uh, oh, man. I forgot how big this thing is. Okay. Well, it's actually not bad. We can put it... Mm. 
Um, let's do it like this. And then what I actually want to do, because now I think the the um, coal mine over here is actually just out of range. So that's a little sad. So let's remove that one. Yay, we get to build it all over again. But at least now I know where to look for it. So we're going to build a coal mine over here. Um, like that. And if we click this one now, can I click it? Hello? No, do we need to do it the hard way? I suppose we do. Um, um, quarry! There we go. Uh, this is the actual buffing range. It's um, fairly small, so we need to keep the other mines close. We do need a road in here. Like so. And then what we can actually do, just because we are working on mining now anyway, um, we can put an additional uh, iron mine, we can put a coal mine right next to it. Just because, well, this is actually going to work at 86% efficiency. That's a little low for my taste. So let's do it like this. And let's have a road around here. And then at some point we can probably fit in another mine over there. So, the quarry. Um, we are going to have to assign a few more people to that. I'm not entirely sure we need this many people actually. But we're going to switch from stone production to quarry production. Now that actually is going to require us to have an upkeep of tools. So this is also why I want to make the... See, this is a coal mine. Did I make two coal mines now? Uh, yes, I did. So hold on, hold on. Clear this building. Clearing buildings can be really annoying in this game. There we go. And then we are actually going to replace the coal mine with an iron mine. This is what I originally intended to do. Now, um, that also means that we can now build another toolsmith. Because we are getting sort of lowish on tools. Uh, initially I upgraded the toolsmith. But we are now going to simply put down another one. And let's just put that straight next to... Let's have a little bit of room in between. So we can pull down this road, just in case, and have a little road like that. So now we have a couple of things. We have a brickworks. And let's make sure we boost the hell out of this production, because why not? Uh, this is actually going to require a lot of clay uh, as well as coal. So coal is really going to be uh, fun. Let's make sure we have all the miners that we can get. And uh, let's make sure we boost the production of this as well. And reducing the upkeep is never a bad thing either. There we go. And the quarry, same thing. Let's make sure we reduce the upkeep. Uh, the quarry is actually uh, a huge upkeep at the moment. So let's make sure we get the most bang for our buck. And then same thing here over here, of course, for the iron mine. Once again, upgraded. The upgrading, to be honest, at this point is kind of a non-issue. As you can see, I have way more gold than I know what to do with. And yeah, that should work like we want it to. The upkeep for this iron mine is actually not that bad, but apparently we have a slant stranded slaver ship. Um, we can take a huge hit to our safety, uh, but then we get five slaves. Or we can let it get a little bit of boost on happiness. Um, yeah, let's just have seven new people. We can take the hit to our safety because we are ac actively working on our safety at the moment. So I'm not too worried about that. A housing shortage? Really? All these houses are now filled up? Um, okay, then I guess we need to build some more houses. And houses to live in they have. So, as you can see, I built quite a few more houses, and if it looks like overkill, it's actually not that much of overkill at all. I now have 75 houses, uh, which are only 8 that are not currently being lived in, and considering we have 62 younglings about to grow up, uh, yeah, that should be just fine in a moment. Now, the food situation is actually interesting, although I do think that we should be fine in that regard as well. Um, but we're probably going to have to deal with that pretty soon-ish. Now, let's see. Um, in terms of workers, how are we doing? We actually have one toolsmith that's not working. 
Um, as I said, we have a lot of people growing up, so we definitely need to look into the tool situation. But before the uh, tool situation, I mean the boot situation, uh, we're also going to have to work towards getting 200 of these bricks in order to upgrade to glass works, and then we should be able to start upgrading our houses as well. And well, the glass works are going to be extremely vital for our um, mid-game type of buildings. Now, to be honest, yeah, it felt like we were getting close to the end game. And then I saw how much research we still have to go. So we're not quite done, as you can see. There is a lot of content to this game, and we're nowhere near done. So that's exciting. Um, but for now, let's get on with those um, bricks. And just as about I was about to put down a glass works, we got this pop up. And that's actually interesting because it's a seeds trader. And basically he's trying to sell us the seeds for lettuce, which is a crop we currently don't have access to. Now considering I have 100,000 coins, it's only going to cost 1,000 coins. This is a no-brainer. Um, that's actually interesting and a nice type of unlock to get in that way, other than just straight up researching. Now, Glassworks is it once again going to require us to put in coal. So we actually do need to check out our coal production at some point to make sure we are able to make full use of that. And it seems that we can nice and snugly fit in the glassworks over here, which seems to make sense to me uh, considering what it requires. So once again, it needs quartz, which we're producing next door. It needs coal, which we're producing next door and coins. So it seems like a pretty optimal position for this building. And now, if I'm not mistaken, and I probably need to turn on the grid here in order to make sure I can see where the road is actually supposed to go. And there we go. We can have a nice and tidy road like this. So that we have some organization and I kind of like the nice square type of builds. We can probably fit in another mine if we need to, but don't forget we have plenty of room to actually upgrade our existing coal mines. I'm not actually sure if we already completely upgraded this one. Uh, no, we didn't. So if we need more coal, we have all kinds of opportunities to do so. Um, something else I did in the meanwhile, by the way, I put in another fisherman's hut because I had the feeling our food was going to be dropping a little bit. I'm not entirely sure if that was actually accurate because of the way the uh, fields work. But uh, there's no such thing as having too much food. So better have a little bit too much than finding out you have too few and then see everyone dying and you kind of have to wait since forever to make sure you get back into that so the merchants are once again feeling unsafe really really um, okay that is something we will definitely need to look into but first let's take a look at the glassworks so we are going to make sure someone is actually working here we are going to make sure we upgrade this now we're actually going to need bricks for that and for that reason, I actually did increase our bricks production by factor two by assigning someone else to work here. So we get a bit faster bricks. And there we go. That's the second upgrade already done. And let's make sure we also reduce the upkeep because, well, well mainly the coin and coal upkeep is something we don't necessarily are a big fan of. And quite honestly, there's no reason not to upgrade all of these buildings to the max. With the ex exception maybe of the expansion because you don't necessarily need to expand. The amount of workers in there you don't actually have those workers to work with all right let's go and fix that um safety issue i'm actually going to have to track down where those people live in order to check down why they are feeling unsafe which is one of the downsides about this game i haven't actually found a way to find where people live other than manually looking through everything so if you have a better way please let me know in the comments Alrighty, so now we have access to glass and that will allow us to um, upgrade our houses to stone houses. So let's do that and you can see it's instant. Um, they kind of fit in with all the other houses so it's um, not trivial to find out which houses you actually already upgraded and which you didn't. But this should actually increase um, the or decrease I should say the upkeep of the house. In fact, once again we look at the housing description. Requires less uh, firewood or coal for heating. Um, not entirely sure if that means it just gets the built-in insulation. I don't think it actually does, considering the option is still there, even if you just build it f uh, from scratch. But this will kind of allow us to upgrade all our housing and yeah, therefore 
have the people that live in those houses be a little bit happier. All in all, they weren't that dissatisfied with their houses so far. Um, but yeah, can't hurt to upgrade the housing while we're at it. Now, uh, speaking of upgrades, by the way, uh, we also unlocked a new upgraded well. I don't actually think we have a well over here just yet. So well, let's make sure we put in one for sure. Uh, and you can see the range on a stone well is way larger than it was on the original well. And you can actually upgrade your wells after you build them. So for example over here we used to have a normal well and we upgraded it and now it covers about the entire region over here. So coupled with this one over here and I think I built some another one somewhere over here which I can't find for the moment. Um, we now have some major protection against fires. You can actually also upgrade your wells, so that actually reduces the chance for fire even further. So make sure you do those things as well. Now, last but not least, I don't, didn't forget about it, don't worry. We want to place down our farm center, and that will actually allow us to get a pretty huge boost to our ranches, our fields, and our apple trees and things like that. Now, I have to say, this building looks kind of awesome. You have an agriculturist i think that's how you pronounce it yep working in here uh, the interesting thing about this building you can't actually upgrade it and um, right now it's just costing us quite a bit of money as well but it will actually increase our efficiency by 15 percent and yes i did have to test it because it doesn't actually tell you how much um, but it seems to be 15 percent so this is 15 percent on pretty much everything within this radius in terms of um, apple trees, wheat fields, etc. So that also means that it's worthwhile to keep building around this if we need to. I mean, we did take up the entire space that has the kind of optimal um, fertility. We actually have some room left over here in case we want to add something to that. Actually, we did get the lettuce, didn't we? So let's just put in a tiny little field. It needs to be 12 by 12. And yeah, we will plant some lettuce over here. Um, let's make sure we do that so we select crop lettuce assign a new farmer and then yes you can see it's at 130 percent efficiency that has everything to do with the fact that this little corner over here is taking off two percent fertility because it's not in the green zone so um it's still worth it it's just a little bit less efficient uh, because this corner of course does mean you get some extra production as well and now we get 800 lettuce all in all our food seems to be doing pretty fine now we're back up to 13,000 um, firewood not a problem surprisingly to be honest because honestly we haven't looked at our li uh, lumber production at all for the last uh, four or five in-game years at least but all in all we seem to be doing pretty fine um, that is it for this episode uh, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed me planting a lot of trees diving into some bricks and glass production and now we can start upgrading our entire town so i'll do that in between episodes and then in the next episode we can get some up to, to some of the more end game mid game ish um, more advanced stuff in this game and it's really exciting because to be honest it, it, the really fun thing i think about this game is that you can gradually upgrade your existing town as well with those houses etc so it's not just all expanding wider and wider it's also about optimizing what you already have um, like adding a few more people in your coal mines or adding a few more people in your whatever buildings um, yeah I think that's just a really nice touch anyway thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this one make sure to like and subscribe leave a comment if you like this it helps the algorithm as well and it's just really fun to see your comments and I hope to see you in the next one